Welcome back to the Mark Moses Show, only right here on Sports Radio 95.9 The Fan. And right now here on the Club 52 Hotline to talk some college hoops. One of my good friends in the industry, his name is Reed Forgrave with Fox Sports covering college basketball. Reed, how you doing today, man? I am great. I am driving back from Madison, Wisconsin. Great skies, but the beautiful basketball game last night. I was going to start with that. Two top five teams going at it in Madison, Wisconsin versus Duke. And is Duke just better? Is that what happened down the stretch last night? I mean, what happened? Um, Maybe. Um, I wrote a column today about uh, one thing that we should never do when we watch a basketball uh, college basketball game in December is to overreact. And then the rest of my column I spent overreacting on, wow, Duke's amazing. Uh, but look, I, I, I'm not sure if this one game says Duke is a better team. Uh, Wisconsin was a little bit out of sorts. Uh, I thought it was a great coaching job by Coach K, a lot of switching. And uh, Sam Decker is uh, playing on a hobbled ankle. Uh, he was in limited minutes. He wasn't nearly as effective as, as we've seen from him. So I, I put a little bit of an asterisk next to that. But to have this freshman-filled Duke team, uh, number one recruiting class in the nation, go on the road, their first road game in like a March-like atmosphere at the Kohl Center. And the place was absolutely electric. And they, it's not like they dominated. It wasn't like a Kentucky-Kansas beatdown. But it was a, they controlled the game from the beginning. Uh, it wasn't really, you didn't ever really get the sense that Wisconsin was going to overtake them. Uh, they looked like the better team last night. I, I was so impressed by, so, by, by, by all three of the freshmen that started for, uh, for Duke. You know, Reed, what's interesting is I'm so engulfed in college football, it's been kind of hard for me to get into college basketball 100% like I usually am. What about you? You cover college basketball. Are you 100% in? For me personally, I am I tend to be the guy who's watching college basketball and on a commercial I'll switch to college football. And I think you know 95% of the rest of the country does the opposite. Uh, I don't like it. I mean, I'm a college basketball guy, but the, the, the college football playoff is – I mean, it is getting so much attention. There's just so much craziness going on in in the jockeying for the top four. I fully expect more craziness this weekend. Um, I mean, let, let's be honest. Like, Florida State, they're not nearly as dominating as they were last year. I wouldn't be surprised if they lose this weekend, get knocked out of the college football playoff. Uh, so it's been really, really fun to watch that. But I'm definitely watching that as a fan from afar, not as an insider where – I get really excited about Iowa upsetting UNC on a random uh, mm-hmm. Wednesday night, December. Do you like that the you know the Big Ten ACC challenge? Because it reminds love me. It. I know you love, I love it. It, it kind of reminds me of interleague playing baseball. Where when I heard, I was like, "Oh, this is awesome!" But now it, it's kind of lost a little fizzle. But but you love it, Reed, huh? Oh, absolutely. Like what a lot of people complain about the regular season of basketball, especially the non-conference season. And say it doesn't ma- it, it doesn't matter, and that's that's not quite true. I mean, when you look into seedings, when you look deeper, and you talk about momentum. But look, last last year, a team that won the national championship was a was a seventh seed in, in UConn. Um, but look, I, I, I love this. It makes games that matter at least have the feeling or the appearance that they matter uh, here in here in December. I, I love all these challenges. Uh, I think they do an, I think that ESPN does an incredible job of getting the best matchups because, frankly, uh, Notre Dame-Michigan State, if you would have had that matchup a year ago, it would have mm-hmm. been a blowout um, in Michigan State's favor. And last night, Notre Dame uh, won that game. I think they could be a really good team this year. So I'm a huge fan of those. Anytime there's a March atmosphere in December, I, I give it two thumbs up. You know what? I agree with you. I agree with you. I, I like your answer right there. And Hey, I, sw- I swayed you. All yeah, right. That's right. You did. I like it. You, um. Who's the best conference? Because now these conferences are going against each other. So far, what you've seen about a month in, who is the best conference then? Well, it's, it's not the SEC. I know that much <laughs> for sure. Um, look, it's probably between – I'm going to say it depends on what your definition of best conference is. Is it top-to-bottom strength where almost every team is really strong? I'd probably pick the Big 12. Uh, there aren't many stragglers in that league. Uh, especially, if it would take kind of a miracle, but it's possible they could get eight of their ten teams uh, in the college basketball playoff. Should we start calling it that now? Yeah, um, we should. We should. And and by the way, 
We should have every week, they should have the selection committee tell me the, the, the 68 teams that are going. Oh, my God. That would be, that would be the worst. <laughs> it would give me such a headache. Uh, I get a feeling the only reason they do that for football is so they can get a couple extra million bucks every uh, uh-huh. ranking show. But uh, and the other two conferences I put in there is Big Ten, which is a pretty deep conference. Uh, only one dominating team in Wisconsin, uh, but a pretty a, a huge second tier. And then the ACC, which I think has, as far as the top tier, uh, has the strongest top tier, uh, although we might be wondering if UNC belongs in that top tier after, uh, after a couple of stumbles early. Uh, but their bottom tier in the ACC is pretty bumbling. Uh, so, yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely an open question at this point. I haven't heard one word about the Big East. And I say that because, look, I covered Creighton. It was like, oh, we're going to be in the Big East. This is a big deal. I haven't really heard anything about the conference. Have you? You know, it, 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 it's funny because I was going to mention that as sort of a fourth conference that's not – no one's going to confuse them for the best conference in the nation, but they've been a conference that's really had some surprises earlier this year. Uh, Georgetown pushed uh, Wisconsin right to the brink. Uh, there was a, essentially a 50-50 game. Uh, Butler had – which seemed at the time to be a huge upset over UNC. Uh, they were ranked fifth in the country. Uh, Butler's probably going to be a ranked team after a lot of drama in the uh, in the preseason with their coach uh, stepping down with medical leave. Uh, Creighton beat Oklahoma. I don't think Creighton is a NCAA tournament team this year, uh, but I think they're better than people said they were. And Seton Hall, and I know it's random to be talking about Seton Hall, especially to people in Florida, but they are one of the more intriguing below-the-radar teams uh, in the country this year because Kevin Willard <clears throat> hasn't made his tournament since his first year there, and they have an amazing recruiting class and a couple of a handful of really good returning players. They, they could be a really interesting team to watch. So, Biggie said, to me, is really interesting, and you could probably just write that off as, hey, he works for Fox Sports 1 and they have the Biggie contract, <laughs> so I tend to follow it pretty closely. But it's definitely been, of all the conferences, it's... Uh, it's outperformed expectations. We're here at the Reed Forgrave. Fox Sports uh, covers college basketball. You were talking about the SEC. <laughs> are the Gators, are they disappointing? Or I mean, it is a rebuilding project, but what's your take on the Gators? Uh, my take is they were ranked in the top ten because of one reason and one reason only to start the season, and that was Billy Donovan. And we are have become accustomed to Billy Donovan having, you know, Single, not just single seed teams, but like top three seed teams in the NCAA tournament. And after graduating four senior starters, uh, it's going to be a rebuilding process. We, the expectations for that team were way too high. I think they'll be fine. I think they'll probably be a, if I had to guess right now, a five or a six seed in the NCAA tournament. I think they could be awesome if things suddenly click for Chris Walker, but I don't see that happening. He's an incredible athlete who just doesn't yet know how to play basketball. Um, so that team's going to uh, they're going to struggle. Luckily, they're in the SEC, so they can probably go sixteen and two. <laughs> yeah, you're absolutely right. What about Kentucky? Are they just going to run away with the conference? And, and I don't know, maybe the NCAA tournament as well. Um, they're going to run away with the conference for sure. Uh, NCAA tournament. Uh, I have to say they're my favorite at this point, but they, that's the thing with. With March, is we judge so much based on one game, one bounce here or there. I mean, look how close, how thin that line is. If you look at uh, the Kentucky Wichita State game from last year in the round of 32, uh, Fred Van Vliet makes that three. Uh, we're talking about John Calipari as a failed season, two years in a row. Uh, I'm not sure if he's on the hot seat, but he's, he sure isn't sitting pretty like he is after making that national title game. Uh-huh. Uh, and we're talking about which does state as world beaters. Uh, so we, we put so much stock in a win or a loss in March. Um, I think Kentucky is the best team in the country. I don't think there would be too many people, uh, too many sane people who would argue against that. But Duke looked great last night. I could see Duke on any given night beating Kentucky. Uh, Wisconsin, still a really, really, really good, if not great team. Uh, it, with the matchup nightmare, there's Frank Kaminsky. They could upset them. Arizona, if, if things really start to gel for that, same thing. Gonzaga's a fascinating team. I know that's a 
small school that you literally could not get any further away from Florida than Spokane, mm-hmm. Washington. Uh, but they're, they might be the best scoring team in the country this year. So there's a lot of teams that are in, the, in that almost there to Kentucky's level. And to me, that's what college basketball is, is all about. I want you to know, when I watch Kentucky read, I think about how if it was old school college ball from 20 years ago, wouldn't their team be New Orleans Noel, Julius Randle, and the unibrow down low with the <laughs> with the Harrison guys? Isn't that oh the, the starting five? <laughs> like in in some sort of like weird universe. Yeah, that would be... I mean, that, that, that would be an NBA team. They could beat the Sixers by, you know, probably... <laughs> 4-0 in a seven-game series. Um, but remember, like, the reason that John Calipari has what he has is because he brings guys in who 20 years ago would have been spread out to lots of different schools. Uh, he has them for a year, maybe two, and he knows he knows he's going to have them for that long, so he is re-recruiting every year to get the next upper crop of freshmen. So, so it's, a, it's a little bit of a, uh, you know, apples and oranges type comparison there. Yeah, you're absolutely right. What are you working on right now? I know you're traveling all around the country covering these games. What can we expect with FoxSports.com for the great Reed Forgrave? Uh, gosh, uh, right now I'm trying to overcome uh, a head cold from driving too much. Uh, <laughs> I'm heading to uh, an Iowa State-Arkansas game tonight, Ooh. which is going to be a really interesting game. It's two really fast-paced teams. Uh, but uh, i got a couple, uh, couple feature stories. Um, if I can... If I can work things out with uh, with the with the family of a certain basketball player, there's a outside chance I could be heading to China for a story next month. So uh, you could probably guess who that is, but we won't go any further into that. But uh, yeah, man, it's a uh, cool thing about the college basketball season. It's a it's kind of like a especially when you're covering it from a national landscape. It's like a five month sprint. So it's uh, in the early parts of the sprint right now. You're gonna go to China to interview someone. And then fly back. That's amazing. We'll you're, you're living we'll the see. dream, man. You're look, look. It's <laughs> seventy degrees here in Florida. I want you to know that. But you, I'm jealous. You're gonna fly somewhere to interview someone. That's awesome. I'm driving past snow-covered cornfields right now. I just would like to point <laughs> that little part out. <laughs> so funny. His name is Reed Forgrave with FoxSports.com. Reed, thank you so much for coming on. I hope you feel better and have a nice holidays with your family. Well, enjoy, man. Let's do it again. 